everybody, this is Bill Sanders, and this is Watch Art Sci, the Art and Science of Watch Collection. Uh, today we're going to be talking about uh, Blanc Pain, and to get started with it, I, I want to take a look at the history of it, sort of an abridged history, but to give some kind of background, because I, I people who know about Blanc Pain that I talk to, they know one thing, oh, it's owned by Swatch. Well, it's it's got a really interesting history and how it came to be part of Swatch is, is interesting too. Okay, um, now, first of all, it was founded back in 1735 by Jehan Jacques uh, Blancpain in the town of Villeray uh, in Switzerland. This is in the Jura region. And, um, and by 1815, um, Jehan Jacques' great grandson, Frederick Louis uh, Blancpain, had modernized the production there to a, a production line of watches. And, and this is still in uh, Ville Ray. Now, by 1865, they had built a factory down by the river so that they could, um, so they could have of electrical power. I mean, this is like 1865. It was pretty early to start using electrical uh, uh, generation, uh, but Blancpain did. Now, by 1932, uh, the last of the Blancpains had died, and uh, there was a daughter who didn't care about taking over the uh, business. And uh, a couple of people working uh, at Blancpain said, hey, we'll, we'll, we'll buy it and take it over, and they did. Now, they had to change the name to uh, Ravel de Blancpain because there's some one of the Swiss laws said, well, you couldn't use the name of the founder unless you had that name. And so they called it Ravel de Blancpain. Now, Ravel was sort of a play on the words of the town that they, they had the uh, factory in, um, Ville Ray. So <laughs> that was where Rayville came from. Now, by 1953, they came up with something really uh, important that they still have today, and it's a watch called 50 Fathoms. And it was uh, developed for the uh, French uh, Nageurs de Combat, which is like the French seals. And uh, also, too, the, the watch they developed uh, was so impressive that uh, Jacques Cousteau, who had, he used to have a famous uh, under sea show, he used it as well. So that was probably, if somebody knows about Blanc Pain, it's not unlikely that they know about 50 Fathoms, especially if they're into divers. Now, by uh, in 71, uh, Blanc Pain was doing pretty well, and they did something very interesting. They uh, it was called Rayville Blanc Pain, but they joined uh, SSIH, the Society Swiss Poor Industry Orology. And they did that in 1971 because they they were they needed the extra capacity for the number of watches they wanted to produce. And they and that was at the peak of their production. They produced 220,000 that year. Now 71, if that rings any bells, that was right before what was called what's come to be called the quartz watch crisis. And this is when quartz watches. Uh, became available, they were cheap, they had great for uh, uh, timekeeping, and so this is when things, bad things, started happening for the uh, mechanical uh, watch companies. In uh, 1983, um, they had already joined SSIH, but by 1973, the banks had told SSIH, say, look, you got to get rid of some of your assets, you're you got too much dead weight here. So they sold it to um, a guy named Jacques Piguet. And Jacques Piguet was running the movement company known as Frederick Piguet. This was Frederick Piguet's son. And so he saw the value in blank pain. And he and another guy named Jean-Claude uh, Biver, Biver bought the company. Okay, now this is in 1983. And uh, it was, Blanc Paint was pretty much on the ropes by, by 1983. So this was like a heaven sent. And of all people to buy it, here you have a movement company buying a watch company. All right, 
Um, so they they moved the company to um, Le Brasseau, and so this was this was the big thing because they had been in Ville Ray forever, and now they moved to Le Brasseau. Okay. Um, now, in 1992, this is another interesting thing. By 1992, SSIH was in a position, and they wanted to buy back Blancpain. And either then or later, they ended up buying Frederick Brigay as well. So now they had a, a sort of a high horology watch company, as well as a, a high horology movement company in Frederick Brigay. And uh, so now here they had both of them. Now, SS... IH became Swatch, okay, and so in 2010, what they did, uh, this was only about seven years ago, they combined Blanc Payne with Frederick Piguet, and Frederick Piguet uh, disappeared, but they were still, I mean, the, 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 the movement company then became part of Blanc Payne, and they, they had what, what they developed, they called vertical integration, and they had this really cool shop in a in a town called Le Satu. And so that's where that's where Frederick Piguet and Blanc Payne were were merged. Apparently they still have they have a farmhouse where they they do some kind of production work also in uh, Le Brasseau. I'm not quite sure what it is, but they've got this brand new uh, place in um, Le Satu. Anyway, so okay, so that'll bring you up to date on Blanc Payne. Now, um, in order to understand where Blanc Payne is coming from, uh, let me read you a quote uh, from uh, Jean Claude Beaver. He said, We wanted only the round shape. He's talking about the watches he wants uh, Blanc Payne to, uh, to make. He said, we only want the round shape and the simplicity of just one model of watch case. Uh, to give the essence of the watch, the movement, the first roll, one case, but a complete choice of classical mechanical movements, all providing one or more extra functions in an extra thin configuration. No concept could be purer than this one. Okay, so this is this will give you a sort of a sense of where Blanc Payne is coming from. Now, let's take a look at their, the next thing I want to look at is their how they've done historically in terms of of a high horology company and one measure of that is winning uh prizes at the grand prix de horologie de genève well they've won four uh they, they they've been in the pre-selection nine times which is which is pretty good in and of itself just to get through the pre-selection but they got there and four of those times they won an award. In 2001, they won the Ladies' Watch Prize, but the Ladies' Watch Prize they won was a chronograph flyback. Uh, a lot of lady watches are made with quartz, and in fact, some have won uh, the Grand Prix prizes with quartz movements. Blanc Payne makes no quartz movements at all. I mean, just about every other watch company has at least some quartz movements, especially and uh, the ladies' watches that are really small, and it's very difficult to have mechanical movements in there, but not Blanc Payne. Blanc Payne has, I think, the smallest, uh, one of the smallest movements in, in ladies' watches. Okay, um, now in 2004, they have, they, they won the, uh, what was called the Extra Plot Prize. Now, Extra Plot means ultra thin. And uh, again, this is what they were, had been, uh, Biver had been talking about what they wanted. And it was called the Villeray Extra Plot. Now, uh, again, the Villeray is a group of watches we'll see in a second. Uh, in 2014, they won another uh, ladies' prize. This is for the off-centered hour. And in 2015, just a couple years ago, they won the Artistic uh, Crafts Watch Prize uh, with a, what's called the Cardan uh, Shakuro. When I first saw, I, I, I really, to tell you the truth, I didn't like this watch that much <laughs> and it's in terms of artistic craft. But when I read about the kind of skill that's required for doing what they were doing, I was very impressed and it certainly deserved to, want, to win. 
Now, between 2006, this is another thing that'll tell you a lot about the company. Between 2006 and 2016, about the last 10 years, they have had 38 new calibers. There are a lot of companies that, oh, well, we can't make a, you know, we can't make our own movement. It's too hard, so we're going to stick in an ETA or something, <laughs> all right, but not Blanc Pain. Well, even though Blanc Pain is owned by the same group, the Swatch group that owns ETA, the last watch I think you'll ever see an ETA in is a Blanc Pain. <laughs> the last thing Swatch watches today, like this is one of our high horology uh, watchmakers along with Breguet and now Harry Winston. And so you've got 38 new calibers. Uh, that's, that's really impressive. No, they have six watches, okay, or six groups of watches that they make. So let's take a look at them. Uh, the first group is the Le Brasseau. And again, this is named after one of the towns where they make uh, their watches. Uh, and they have something, this is the, the Le Brasseau watch uh, model. That's where they have their complexity. Now there's complexity and there's complexity. <laughs> This one combines a tourbillon with a carousel. <laughs> a carousel is, is something sort of almost like the mirror image of a, of a tourbillon, except I think it's a lot more complex. They put elements of the movement on this, on a, what about to a carousel, and then turn it around so that in all different directions and all different angles that your watch is going to be in, this, is, this will be, um, it, it'll keep a better time that way. But they have an Atour Beyond. At the bottom, I don't know if you can see it or not, but you can see the gears is, is sort of like a horse on, a, on one of those carousels that goes up and down, except the horse going up and down is the movement, and it turns it around for these different angles. Okay, this is, this is, uh, one of the models that they make, the uh, complexity, and within the complexity, there are all kinds of different models. Or, I'm sorry, in the uh, uh, Le, Bra, uh, Le Brasseau. Okay, uh, the next is the Ville Ray. Again, named after one of the villages where they made the watches. Uh, the Ville Ray, uh, this was the, the one that's probably the most popular is the Extra Plot. Uh, it's the one that won the award uh, in 2004, won the Grand, uh, a Grand Prix prize. And, uh, but they don't just make that, they have some other ones as well. There's, uh, there's just one example that I put up there, the uh, Quatremine uh, Complete. Um, here's the thing about the Extra Plot Ray. You can find these for under four thousand dollars okay i mean you can get a watch that won grand prize if you if you're looking to get into true high horology uh, that and an affordable one and an affordable i know it's a lot of money but you can get a a true high horology watch and uh that's that's a cool watch now here's the thing uh, the one that is more affordable is in steel. The one that actually won was in white gold. I can't tell them apart. Okay. So, um, anyway, here's an economical entry into the, the very high reaches of high horology and affordable, too. All right. The next uh, watch they have is the Le Mans. And Le Mans is a big lake. <laughs> I didn't know what it was. It's giant lake in Europe, and uh, they decided that would be a sort of thoughts of travel and so forth. This is These are their travel watches. Uh, this Reveal uh, GMT uh, there is, it has an alarm and a uh, double time zone. Uh, and of course, all of these are in-house calibers, every single one of them. Now, some of them, there, there were some people, you know, are worried about, well, do Frederick Piguet count as in-house or <laughs> you know, yeah, they're all part of one company now, and they have total vertical integration in um, Lesa too. So I mean, it's it's not something to to, to worry about. And Frederick Piguet makes 
I mean, like a lot of other top uh, high horology companies use them as well, but now they're owned by, uh, they're all part of Blanc Paint. So it's sort of, Blanc Paint had its own movements, and then they have this, uh, really to me it was nothing but an enhancement of great movements. Okay, travel, there's a travel watch in their Le Mans series. Um, now the divers, um, they, I, I didn't realize how good their divers were. The 50 Fathoms is, is really a, quite a famous one and they, they just came out with a new one called um, the uh, Mill Spec, uh, the one on the right. Uh, the Mill Spec is uh, for military uh, specs. And the little uh, ball that you can see, it has a little orange and white ball at the, underneath, the di uh, underneath the hands. Uh, if that turned red, that means it sprung a leak. <laughs> so you're looking at your thing, it turned red, but holy smoke. Uh, now, the um, uh, as I mentioned before, these things were made for the um, uh, French Navy SEALs. I think the American SEALs uh, use them too, if I'm not mistaken. And also, too, Jacques Cousteau did. So, I mean, if you're interested in divers, boy, I tell you, you can't find a better mechanical diver, I think, in the world than these. These are these are seriously good divers. Okay, um, they're also, too, this is another thing, too, that you're seeing in more and more watch companies. They're advertising the fact that they're involved in some kind of social or ecological or something, and the oceans, uh, they're losing, the oceans are in real trouble, let me put it that way, because we polluted them so badly, and they, they're working with the, uh, the economist world Ocean Summit, and uh, so that's a good thing. All right, uh, the this next group is called the L Evolution, and uh, the, the one that I have there is a chronograph flyback Rotapont <laughs> Grand Date. Yeah, this is for all of the watches in this group are for innovation and experimentation. No, too, they've all been round, just like Bevere said that they wanted. And if you look at the uh, the movement on the bottom there, you, the, one of the things that is winding the date is from zero to three. Well, there's only uh, 31 days tops, so they figured, well, might as well have one go from zero to three rather than have a, a great big one that goes all the way around like most watches have. Uh, so this is really cool. And also, too, you can have, uh, it's a little easier, I think, to, not easier, but uh, for putting in a perpetual date. Okay, um, again, all of the movements are in-house. <laughs> right. Okay, now this final group is the women's, um, which is interesting because it's one of the few, you know, you always see their ladies this and ladies that. They call it their women's watches. Good for them. Uh, even <laughs> one of them is called Lady Bird, so <laughs> so much for that. All mechanical. Every single one of these is mechanical, and it, this is for they sort of their watches for what they call beauty and, and refinement, and also feminine feminine taste as well. They've got gorgeous watches. They've won twice. They've won the Grand Prix for the uh, ladies' watches, and they're and they're really cool watches too. I mean, they have uh, there's Quantamine retrograde. They're not just simple watches. The ultra plot, the um, uh, there are two different ultra plots there, and then the double uh, Puse Hori, which is a uh, uh, two dates, you know. So they have a wide variety of mechanical watches for women, not just quartz watches, and they're gorgeous too. That uh, Mille Un Mille et Un Nuits, a uh, thousand and one nights, boy, I tell you, uh, these are not inexpensive, <laughs> by the way. Okay, well, uh, that's for Blanc Pain. I hope uh, if there's some one of those or any of those or all of those you're interested in, you've got something for that. Now it's time for our drawing. We're having, uh, I'm celebrating my retirement and the beginning of summer. Uh, and here I have all of the people who have uh, put in, who are subscribers, who have added, uh, well, have contributed to our, our uh, watch uh, collection review. So I am going to, what I've done is that I just put the numbers in. There were, I think there are a total of 40. Uh, now we have the four that have won. I, uh, I 
I uh, took them out because you can only win once. So let's see what we got this time. And it is number 28. Okay. You can see that up there. 28 where? Wow. There it is, number 28. Okay, well, let's see who number 28 is. Uh, if, if, if you had review number 28, you know who you are, but let me see if I have it right here. And it is Kevin, uh, Kevin's Well-Balanced Collection. Okay, now, Kevin, um, you've got three different watches. You can choose any one of these. Uh, two of them are um, quartz, and one is mechanical. Of uh, this is a Casio, and it is a chronograph date display mineral crystal hundred meter um, water resistant. So, and it's got a, uh, a metal bracelet. Okay, and the next one is a Seiko. Uh, this one has a canvas bracelet, and it is a I guess a hybrid watch because it it is um, quartz, but the it also generates power for the quartz for the quartz battery uh, in your movement. So it's it's a sort of a combination of an automatic and a uh, quartz watch together. And finally, uh, and these are all brand new by the way. Um, be glad to know. Uh, this is an Armatron. Now this is a mechanical watch. And the interesting thing about this is that it's skeletonized. And so you can get a skeletonized watch. It's got a, uh, a metal band and um, it's, uh, it's automatic. So your movement of your wrist will wind it for you. Okay, Kevin, so uh, shoot me an email um, and I'll uh, send it to you. <laughs> Okay, that's it for uh, uh, today. On Sunday, we're going to have our next uh, watch review. If you didn't win a watch this time, you're still eligible until you do win. Okay, so if you've sent in a collection where you reviewed, um, this is good until you win a watch. And uh, on Sunday, we're going to have our next um, our next review. So I hope to see you on Sunday. I love your comments. I'd really like to hear your comments of what you think of Blanc Pain after today's presentation. I hope you got something out of it. And also, as always, this is an invitation to subscribe if you'd like. Okay, so this is Bill Sanders for Watch Art Sci, the art and science of watch collection. See you next time.